Hello, and we're here at uh, the Aircraft Restoration Company at Duxford today with the Hawker Typhoon project, and we're with Sam Worthington Lease. Sam, can you give us a bit of background on the aeroplane? Yeah, so the aircraft we're rebuilding is RB396, uh, shot down 1st of April today, uh, 1945. Okay. Um, it was built at the end of November, okay. test flown end of November, um, armaments fitted in December, and it joined the squadron in early January. So it flew for effectively three months, uh, January, February, March 1945. Uh, we know that it did at least 36 combat sorties from logbook evidence of various pilots that flew it. Um, and in that three months, we know that it got hit 18 separate occasions uh, by flight. Uh, but the final time, causing it to force land in a field uh, near Danekamp in the Netherlands, uh, as I say, on the 1st of April 1945. Every pilot, though, that we know flew the aeroplane, in the last three days of it, four days of its career is quite interesting. Uh, but they all survived the war. That, that must be pretty unique. Yeah. I think it is. Um, I'm sure it happened elsewhere, but not very much. Considering there was a 56% attrition rate, and that's purely yeah. kill. And I'm talking injured, shot down, captured, you know, missing. Killed in action, 56%. 666, 666 that we know of. Yeah, that, that's what the research suggests at the moment. And I'm happy to be wrong on that and it to be 665, or, but it doesn't change it. No. It's a huge number. And this is a really rare surviving airframe, isn't it? And how many typhoons are in existence? Uh, well, none really. Uh, you've got the one museum example, which was a uh, original air, airframe, not a combat veteran, though, never saw combat, was sent to the, the States for testing. Uh, MN-235 that now sits in the RAF Museum in Hendon, uh, but I don't think we'll ever fly, uh, almost certainly we'll never fly. Uh, but this is probably the only genuine combat veteran Hawker Typhoon in existence. And it will fly. And it will fly. I'm confident of that. I wouldn't have spent the last nearly 10 years uh, doing this if I didn't think we were going to get it done. Okay. So you've got a personal link to the Typhoon, haven't you, with your grandfather? And am I right in thinking that's how this project came into being? It is, yeah. So um, I'd just been made redundant from the Air Force and I'd started work as a, as a flying instructor down in, uh, in Sussex. I was researching his history. I knew he was in the Air Force, I knew roughly what he flew, but I, I wanted to dive into it a little bit deeper. Uh, and I discovered that he was flying uh, Typhoon MN252 on the 21st of May 1944. Uh, hit by flak, force landed again in the Netherlands. Uh, captured, went to Stalag with three. Um, and amazingly, we managed to track down someone who had visited that site, had parts from that aircraft recovered. They were recovered at the time, and they'd been in storage seats, um, that were for sale, although that was a year previous. So I, I reached out, thinking they'd be long gone, and the guy got back to me and he said, no, I've sold them, I've not sent them yet, do you want me to hold some small cockpit parts aside for you? Obviously I said yes, uh, and he sent them to me, so and we have those parts, and then that conversation led me to cross paths with a UK collector who was collecting major sections of Typhoon with no real idea of what he was going to do with it other than store it in his garage at the time. Um, we had a conversation um, and long story short I said if you've got a, uh, you know, everything you need to make this aeroplane fly, all we're lacking is the money, why don't we get together and I'll try and raise the money? And that was the foundation of the, the project and the charity came a year later in 2016. Okay. You say you've got lots of pieces of Typhoon, you can see you've got an APSA say the here, the cockpit section. Is there anything you don't have? Not really, no. So in terms of what we need to get this aeroplane flying, we need either original parts to make pattern and drawing and, and some new parts from, or drawings in the first place, um, or the data to fill in the gaps, engineering expertise to put it all together, and money. But those five things, the only thing we're missing is money. Everything else is in place. And how much money are we talking about? Type Realistically, in total, about six million. I say about, and it, it could be six and a half, it could be five and a half, it could be seven, but it, it's going to be in the region of six million. And if that money was in your pocket today, how quickly could the aeroplane be back in the air? Between four and five years. So, conveniently in time for the big D-Day anniversary sort of coming up. Absolutely. So we've got D-Day anniversary next year, obviously D-Day 80. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, I think we'd be stretched to, to, to make that. <laughs> yeah. 
never know. Aircraft restoration company are good, but they're possibly not that good. Uh, but yeah, um, D Day 85 with the right support, every chance. Every chance. And how can people contact you if they want to help the project? So, easy uh, first step is just go to our website, hawkertyphoon.com. Easiest website possibly to remember, uh, hawkertyphoon.com. We've got various support tiers. Um, starting from you know two pounds a month right up to as much as you can afford. Uh, we say to people if if, if, you, if you want to support to, to that degree, please please just do or get in touch for a chat. If you want to support outside of that and perhaps slightly more, then then please just go via the website. If you send a contact email in there, or you can search me out on social media. Um, there are only five Worthington leases in the world, and I'm one, and they're all in my family. So you, you can find me. Uh, order projects, yeah, just, just reach out, have a chat. With me. Excellent. Well, good luck with the project, Sam. We look forward to following the progress over the coming years. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. And now we, we've got a real treat. We're here now with Bernard Gardner, who flew Hawker Typhoons during the war. Yes, that's right. Yes. Bernard, where, where did you fly from? Where was your base, Bernard? Um, well, basically, uh, the Typhoon was based at Antwerp. Okay. Right. Yes. Uh, and how many missions did you fly in the aeroplane? 71. 71? Yes. Good <laughs> Lord. Excellent. And what was it like to fly? Was it Because it looks like a real beast of an aeroplane. It, it, was it significantly different to what you'd flown before? No, no. It was quite similar to fly uh, the Hurricane. It was heavier, but it's um, yeah, yeah. nicely balanced controls. So, okay. Yeah. And you were on ground attack missions, is that yes, right? That's right. Okay. Yes, that's right. So that was firing rockets? With ro ro Both, yes. Rockets and bombs? We did carry uh, either bombs or rockets. And okay. They had interchangeable racks on the, under the wing. And they changed quite quickly to, from a bomber to a <laughs> rocket firing. There's lots of stories about the Napier Sabre being an unreliable engine. Did you find that it was a... a, it, a it, it was originally... A very unreliable engine, and an average uh, airframe life of nine hours. Nine hours, good lord. Uh, but that was uh, because the um, it was a sleeve valve engine, and um, the, the sleeve uh, was getting a lot of wear because it was a highly polished surface, and, and when the uh, piston went down, the scraper ring took all the oil with it. Oh, I see. And, and it, when it went up again, there's no lubrication. No, no oh, of course. And uh, they uh, eventually realised the, the, the problem with it, uh, and they went to open oil and it just produced the um, uh, slightly matte surface on the inside of the sleeve. Yep. And um, that, that left sort of the uh, problem. Uh, when the piston went down, it left a bit of oil behind it. The on the way up. Again. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now I've been told I've got to ask you something about a 200-foot hawthorn hedge. Can you tell me the story <laughs> behind the hedge? <laughs> well, I was um, what was it uh, on uh, a mission to uh, just uh, learning to fly the hurricane, really. Uh, and I uh, uh, had to go uh, a height climb. Uh, uh, climb as, as high as I could mm -hmm. manage. Which is uh, about 18,000 feet. Okay. American. And then, and then to, to uh, practice low flying. And this was to be uh, a, a minimum height of 200 feet. Right. <laughs> and uh, so I did my height climb and I came down and I was flying. Uh, just cross country in about 200 feet, I like should have been. And, um, and then there were a, a group of uh, Mandy Army girls who were waving at me. From, <laughs> so uh, I had to impress them. Oh, of course. So, <laughs> so I turned around and flew, flew past them. At, of course, not below 200 oh, absolutely. feet. Absolutely. And that was when this Hawthorne suddenly popped up <laughs> 200 feet. <laughs> Oh, but you managed to get the aeroplane down okay? Oh yes, but, uh, and then spent quite, quite some time sitting underneath the hurricane, poking the twigs of the The Hawthorne the twigs out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so but, uh, I was ably assisted by uh, some uh, WAFs. Good. Uh, 
And did your career continue after the war, or did you retire in 1945? Uh, no, no, I, I went into civil aviation. Then. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And, and when did you finally retire from flying? Hmm? When did you finally yeah. retire from flying? Uh, yeah, when I was um, just 60 years old. My wife starts in 65. Okay, yeah. a career well lived. <laughs> And you have been head doddering all through flying several airlines. Oh, good lord. Well, well, I have to say, Bernard, I understand it's your birthday this week. Is it 101 this week? 101, many, yes. Many happy birthdays from the Royal yeah, Aeronautical thank Society. You very much. Yes. And um, we wish you many, many years to come. Yes, thank, thank you for your time. Yes. Thank you. And now we're joined by Air Marshal Cliff Spink. Um, Cliff, Hawk Typhoon. An amazing aeroplane. Why do you think it's important that an aeroplane like this gets restored to fly? It, talking earlier on, at, uh, looking over our shoulder at what looks like a jigsaw, in a way that's a, a bit of a metaphor for the typhoon, in so much as the part of historical, that part of the history in terms of war fighting aeroplanes of this sort, the part of the jigsaw that's missing is the typhoon. It was such an important ground attack aeroplane. Well, it's an important aeroplane in, in all, all senses. But whereas other aeroplanes, quite rightly, have, have been resurrected and now you see lots of Spitfires, Hurricanes, lots of other aeroplanes flying, the one that is missing and was so singularly important for that period in history, um, around about the D-Day landing, just before and post that, um, it's almost a travesty that it, it is missing from history. A lot of people sacrifice their, la their lives in the aeroplane. That in itself is a worth memory. But in terms of technology, the engine, the ordnance that they were using, the tactics, they were so... Um, it was early days, but they were paving the way for tactics today. But in itself, the aeroplane, apart from the fact that I think it looks wonderful, yep. Um, I think it really does need to sort of be back and sit where it should with its other cousins, the Aspit Park, American. So, so tactically, the, the, the cab rank system that the Typhoon has had, you, that sort of was, has evolved through into the modern day? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they were beginning to realise, remember that at that time VHF radios was, were coming in to play to coordinate with land, uh, uh, land forces yep. and to make sure that they were being able to use the weaponry. It wasn't just, shall we say, spraying it around, you know, finding ta targets of opportunity, or they were doing that. Um, it was the ability to coordinate attacks so that what weaponry you used was really well focused on where the enemy was. So the fire and manoeuvre of ground forces had that extra dimension. Um, so, so many parts to this, um, this aeroplane, yeah. which is important. Excellent. Well, thank you, Cliff. Appreciate your time. Appreciate My pleasure.